So what exercises can we do to better feel the role of the non-dominant arm so that it functions correctly? Or in other words, what you learned just now is that we create upper body stability so that we learn to firm up the chest, the shoulders and the scapula on both sides. Because when we do that, this arm will automatically stick out. So the first exercise I showed already some time ago in the universal swing video. So that's the number eight swing. So you keep the arms parallel and you swing like this in a big number eight. So this one, I give credit to my good friend Mili from tennismethod.com. He taught me this exercise and I use it a lot in my, uh, my lessons. You can do this in neutral stance or in open stance. Another exercise you can do, so exercise number two, you hold the racket like this and you squeeze it a bit. So when you will squeeze the racket, you will of course engage the muscles in your non-dominant side and you can do simple simulations of the stroke or you can also do number eight swings and all the time while you're doing the movements you're trying to squeeze the racket together a bit and try to become aware of the firmness or the sensations on your non-dominant side especially here in the in the lower scapula region that you feel this firmness because later when you hit a forehand you have to maintain that firmness here in order to keep the stability of the upper body because in most cases for players this collapses when they're hitting the ball their left side especially here in the back collapses and they lose the stability and then this arm suddenly feels alone as it's hitting and it starts to look for power and as it's hitting with power it's changing the racket angle and that's why the stroke is not consistent so the stroke will be consistent only when we repeatedly come into contact with very little variation of the racket angle and the way to we achieve it is that we calm down the arm and we're hitting with body rotation or upper body rotation so in order for us to engage upper body rotation we have to feel the whole upper body let's say from the here from the chest up we have to feel that this is one unit we have to feel one firm unit of which we swing the arm and we rotate the third exercise to engage the left arm and the left side and the whole upper body is to do half half so when i'm preparing the forehand i'm preparing with my non-dominant arm then i take over here i do the forehand again to the non-dominant arm and i continue in the loop so we're staying in this big number eight like we did with the first exercise but you're doing half of the movement using right arm and half of the movement left arm so here i take over and i always try to keep the arms quite parallel so this is the exercise so when you keep doing this with the left you learn to prepare also with the left side of the body you're engaging all these muscles here and that will put you in the right position in the right tension of the body from where you can rotate into the stroke so this helps you really wake up the left side and also relax the right side because for me for a right hander the right side has nothing to do in the backswing so we are not doing the backswing with the right arm engaged the right arm is passive and it's waiting for its moment and its moment is coming here and most of the backswing is completely passive and the way we make the arm passive is that we are engaging the opposite side so that's why we can exaggerate and we hold the racket like this and only here we take over swing and take over again release and practice like that here's another exercise you can do this one i learned from my friend neil i'll give you a link to his website or to his youtube channel so you put your hands together and you squeeze together you try to push one hand into another and when you do that of course your muscles are going to engage and then you can try and do a few rotations like this very slowly again you can try both stances and so i'm doing open stance 
and I can do neutral stance and as, as long as I am pushing together my hands there will be a firmness in my shoulder, in my scapula region, in my chest so there will be a firmness so the goal for you is to become more familiar with this firmness that you know how to stabilize the upper body and then when you get the racket and the ball that you can maintain it while you're hitting the ball another good exercise for engaging the non-dominant side is to have a ball this one is about half kilo one pound weight so we want a bit of the weight because when we do this preparation like this if the ball is too light it doesn't really engage our muscles on this side but this one half kilo is good weight so I am simply simulating a forehand with a ball or some weight in my left hand and that will automatically engage all these muscles on this side so you can just go here that you feel some engagement and you must be very attentive that you don't from this position that you don't do this that you don't collapse but you are going roughly parallel to this side and you're maintaining engagement of your shoulder and here top of the chest and here in the back of the scapular region you're maintaining engagement during the forehand it's also a very good idea if you practice this in slow motion because you are going to feel the muscles so you're doing a forehand and you're moving like this also in front of the mirror it's very good idea if you can practice this in front of the mirror again the stance doesn't matter you can start with open stance so that you don't complicate with your feet but then you can also try neutral stance pay attention to the hip rotation and the back foot that it tilts like this and you can just come like this with the racket to the ball so this exercise if you if you do it slowly with about half kilo you will definitely feel a lot of engagement in your non-dominant side then your goal is that when you let go of the ball that you don't immediately collapse but you maintain that engagement of the non-dominant side while you're hitting the ball one of the best devices that I found that you can use for engagement of the non-dominant side and stabilizing and firming up the upper body is the wear bands so I'm using it uh, you can use it in various ways you can also attach to your feet and use for the legs you can also use for the other hitting hand but since today we're talking about the non-dominant hand you just attach your non-dominant hand then your goal is to simply practice and always maintain a tight uh, elastic band so that it doesn't slack like this and this will automatically teach you to engage the left side so again players will many times do like this and they will feel this stretch and then when they hit they're going to collapse so they will very very clearly feel how the elastic uh, gets uh, slack like this and also there's a little sound of this uh, ring so you can very quickly hear that you're doing it wrong and your goal is to maintain the elastic band stretched throughout the stroke so again you can do neutral stance or open stance and you can just come up here like just catch the racket here and this automatic if I want to keep this stretched I am automatically engaging this muscle and here and here in the scapula and I'm pulling so the good thing about this device is that you can hit some balls with it so I will try to demonstrate so I can I can actually play some balls because it's very important to do that because from my experience as I try this players would oftentimes do the movement correctly when there is no ball even if I just use a simple elastic band and I attach it and they would do it correctly and the moment we take the elastic band away and we throw them the ball they go back to their old muscle memory because it is so ingrained deeply in the mind so this uh, this gadget this device allows you to actually 
hit the ball or even play tennis you can actually play tennis while wearing this and you're going to get all the time constant feedback whether you're doing it right or wrong okay so you try a few times in slow motion without the ball first try slow motion without the ball yes you can go even slower slower slow slow slower slower than this now slow 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 like you move in small increments now keep pulling pulling with the left yes pull 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 with the left pull that's right okay now keep your head straight look forward fix your eyes forward that's right okay now here comes the ball it's okay here we go yes now at the end hold tension stop that's right at the end yeah because that's how we make sure that the tension was there because player would like to relax usually too quickly so now yes now you try to feel the whole upper body that's right and you just turn your upper body in the ball that's right then it becomes very simple you stop hitting with the arm you're just turning your shoulders your chest your upper body that's right see this one was perfect effortless okay now just take off quickly just in the hand just uh, yeah just put in the pocket and now see if you can maintain similar feeling in the left side is your left side still engaged and i don't mean so much the arm but i mean around the shoulder the scapula the chest that's right you see it's just rotation that's right yes. better much. much better all right five minutes so in conclusion, I hope that by now you understand that it's not about the left arm or the non-dominant arm, but it's about the upper body stability. And when we create firmness and stability on the upper body, the left arm is simply going to show that. So it's going to stick out like this. And that can kind of deceive you into thinking that you have to move the left arm correctly. But actually it's about firming up the upper body, maintaining stability through the stroke as that will give you control and power. The reason why I'm showing a lot of exercise, you've seen a lot of exercises, is so that the training doesn't become too boring, because when you do some corrective exercises, they will probably not work in five minutes or not even in three days. The player might have to do various exercises for three or four weeks or a bit longer. And so I personally like to use many different exercises that actually target the same thing in order to keep the lessons interesting because I used to work with a lot of kids and they get bored quickly so we have to find creative new ways of making the training interesting and yet uh, practicing the right thing. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.